Hey y'all. I know it's been a while. Sorry, apologize for that. Had a little arm issue. I'm gonna talk to y'all about my newest thing I'm doing. It's called a food forest. And I just got this in and I was gonna open it with you guys. So what is a food forest? I live in a really dry climate. So I'm gonna be combining some food forest ideas with some Google culture ideas. Hugo culture, that's another one. What is that? So Hugo culture will help me retain some of the moisture when we do get it, um, as well as feed the soil that's going to feed all of my plants. So the, and a food forest starts, you've got your canopy layer, and then it works all the way down and everything that produces all the way down to the ground cover area all produces some kind of food and it's grown in a more natural way. So like if you went to walk in the edges of the wood and you saw the big trees and underneath that maybe some vines around the trees and some shorter trees and some bushes and then on the ground there was food, flowers, edible flowers, things like that that can feed you. So it's going along that same idea but we're putting it all with food bearing plants. Now my, my food forest is also going to be a bee garden so a lot of my plants are going to be to help feed bees. Planning on getting those next year. So, but in the meantime, this has got some of my canopy layer trees that I ordered, my mid-level trees that I ordered. So let's see what's in the box. I already popped it so I wouldn't have to fight with that while you were waiting, but I haven't pulled or even looked at what's inside. So, let's see. I'm so excited, guys. I'm so excited. Oh, goodness. What came in? What came in? Oh, okay. All right. So, this has got canopy level. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. So this is a Bartlett pear. This one over here in the big that came in the big bucket. But this kind, when I did some research on it, it needed a another type of pear to really get the best production between the two. So one of these, and I can't tell which one, I believe it's this one. Where's your label? Yes, there it is. Is another type of pear. It's called a moon glow. So I'll plant these lower than my canopy level because these are going to get a little shorter. My canopy level is these two and these are a desirable, desirable, this one is desirable and this one is my Stuart pecans. Guys, I grew up in Oklahoma and I kind of miss having pecans everywhere. Now I have been told pecans will grow really well here in New Mexico. So we shall see. We shall see. I hope so because I love pecans and I kind of miss well, pecan, pecan picking. And I know it's going to be a few years before I get some, but I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Now this other one, where is the label on it? Because I don't remember the name of this, this strain that I got, but it's a grape. And I don't know how well it's going to grow here. So I did some research and I found one that says that it can grow in my growing region. So if it does well, I'm probably going to get some more of these because I love grapes. I said, I don't remember the name of this one though. I found my tag and I really didn't want to untie my bundle. It looks like I'm going to have to. Oh, it's like Christmas, guys. 
in March. It's awesome. I'm so excited about my trees. Okay, there we go. All right. And that one is Reliance Grapes. That's what they are. So, as you can see, I am ready to start my food forest. So my plan is, let me tie this back up because I don't want anything to fall out because I'm not ready to put them in the ground quite yet. Got a little bit of work out there to do before I can do that and we're just now hitting where I can barely start working the soil. So I don't want to pull them out right this minute. I'm going to pause y'all for just a minute so I can find a safe place to put these. Okay, so the idea is my pecan trees are going to sit like, okay, you can't see my hands, here and here. And then I'll have the pear trees here and here. Now these are going to be on the north side because my shorter trees, once the pecan trees get big, my shorter stuff's not going to get as much sun. So they'll be on the north side of this garden area. Then I'm going to do the Hugel culture mound. I'll dig down about six or seven inches. Y'all know I got a problem with the wild bunny. I hate the wild bunnies. Oh my God, I hate the wild bunnies. They eat everything. So I'm going to dig it down actually about 18 inches and then put some fencing that'll buried down that deep one that will help control the bunnies, first of all those suckers kind of come in and eat all my baby trees I've tried to plant it so far and this is what I learned is I dig in deep and I make a basket for my baby trees so that they can get a good root system going before them bunnies can get anywhere near them that's my only hope of growing any kind of fruit tree or any baby tree really except for you know the stupid trees that bunnies don't like that grow like weeds yeah. yeah I got one of those I just keep it keep all the babies trimmed off of it anyway I think it's called Chinese elm I think is what I looked up anyway it's cute I'll let it stay I just ain't letting it have babies anyway so my con trees are going to cause all this shade so I want them on the north side so that the rest of my plants can get more of that southern sun so my my uh Hugel culture is going to go kind of between them. I don't want to plant the trees into the hugel culture because as everything breaks down, the logs and everything at the bottom, as they break down, it could cause my trees to start leaning and maybe fall over, be at more risk of them falling over. So they'll go with the ends of the hugel culture mound, maybe even slightly to the north of it. Maybe I'll make the hugel culture kind of curve around the the tree area so that they can hold moisture in too. Then I'll have my pear trees between those. So pecan trees, my pear trees. My pear trees can handle a little bit more shade than, than the pecans, but not a whole lot. So I don't want to put them too far into their shade. I still want them to have some sun. So they're going to be slightly between and slightly south of my pecan trees so that they at least get that sun coming in from the side even after the pecan trees get really big. The next layer, if they work, I'm going to have some grapes and I'm going to train the grapes to grow both on an arch that I'm going to put in there and then if they do well, I'm also going to put them, train them once my pecan trees get bigger to grow around the, the trunks of the pecan trees. This is my, my, my idea in my brain, guys. This, and we'll see if it's going to work, but I really don't know. And then I'm going to have some bushes. So I've got a hardy kiwi plant. It's a, like a skin, a, a smooth skin version of a kiwi um, that's supposed to grow well for my region, be able to tolerate my winters, because as y'all know, I get some pretty brutal winters sometimes, and other winters are just calm as calm can be and so dry that... I feel like I'm going to dehydrate just walking outside for five minutes in, in the winter. Oh, don't fall, baby trees. Don't fall. I thought I had you stable. You, you okay there? Okay. Oh, get my 
could get my heart going. I thought they were going to fall over, and I don't want them to fall over. Okay, so then I'm thinking, like, maybe some blueberries to go on that, that bush layer, some shrubbery-type fruit-bearing trees. Um, definitely raspberries. Raspberries do really well here. I don't want to have all one kind of, of produce coming from my food garden because I want variety. Now, I need two pecan trees for them to cross-pollinate. So I'm gonna have two pecan trees. I need two pear trees for them to cross-pollinate. So I'll have two pear trees. On my other things, if they cross-pollinate, I'll have two. If they can self-pollinate, I'll only have one. So it'll depend on what they make and how they pollinate, whether I'll have one or two of them. Now, the next layer down is gonna be some herbs that can handle some, some uh, cover some some shade so I'm gonna put like some rosemary if I can get one to grow big enough to survive my winters before I put it outside that is I uh, keep putting them out too early and then I need to remember to put them out in the spring into the ground but I typically remember like midsummer and then put them in and well that doesn't give them enough time to get a good root system before the winter hits and then I end up killing them and getting mad at myself over and over because I keep doing this. I don't know what my problem with it is, but I keep doing this. So my plan is to get it in early spring next year. I'm, I've got one in a container that I've been growing inside since last year, but I can't just throw it out there when my hygge culture is done because by then I'm going to be starting to head into summer, so I'll run into the same thing I've had before. So I'll actually just, I'll put that in its bucket out there for this summer, but then next spring, as soon as I can work the, the ground, I'll put it in the ground earlier in the year so it can get a good root system growing into the ground. And then I'll have chives, because they do well in spring, I mean in, in a in my winter they grow early in the spring they grow late into the fall if they don't get too overheated um, maybe some onions so, so it's not all going to be perennial there'll be some annual stuff so like my onions I'll plant there because they don't really like my summer heat that I have here so I get brutal cold winters I get really hot summers uh, curse of living in a desert a, a mountain desert is you know you got both ends of the spectrum so I'll plant them where they get some shades so they don't get too hot but then I'll also have my sage in there um, I've got a hook up I'm gonna get some white sage that I'm gonna put in there um, a couple of other things that I've got plans on for putting in there and I'm still researching some others that I'm not real sure how well they do in shade but if they'll do okay in shade I'll put those in there and then the, you come down to the ground the, the ground cover level and I have ordered some red and white clover. Now, bunnies like clover. So my hope is it's not just gonna be in my food forest area that I'm gonna put this clover, I'm gonna put this stuff all over my yard. And my hope is that if I can get enough clover growing to feed these freaking wild bunny enemy of mine they will find enough food in that clover to leave my gardens alone so that's my hope y'all hope with me that please let this work because i'm running out of ideas and I, i've lost track of how many i've had to shoot and i don't want to keep shooting them because we can't really eat them here because we have things that bunnies get like bubonic plague in this area yeah it's still out there guys it's still out there so we can't eat them safely some people say certain times of the year you can I'm not willing to risk that you know I just no not willing so I'm trying to find a way to still feed the bunnies because the wild bunnies do have a purpose here we also have coyotes well as long as there's a good wild bunny population those coyotes feed on those wild bunnies and leave my chickens and goats alone so I don't want to eradicate those wild bunnies either I just want to stay the hell out of my gardens so I'm going to plant a lot of this clover and hopefully 
that will work to feed them enough that they won't mess with my garden as much. That's my hope. I'm also going to be planting a lot of, of things into my food forest area that bunnies don't particularly like the smell of. So that's where the rosemary and the sage and the onions and the chives come in. They don't particularly like that smell. Now, my experience so far has been that depending on the onion, these little suckers will eat my onions. So I'm not going to be planting red onions, yellow onion, no, none of the sweeter onions. Um, my onions I'll plant in that area are going to be the really strong smelling onions to maybe help deter. Might plant some garlic out there too. It's hit or miss whether or not they mess with my garlic. So we'll see if maybe with the clover and the garlic and the chives and the rosemary and the sage and all the other stuff I'm going to plant that's supposed to naturally be smells they don't like. We'll be planted closer to the edges of this area. I'm hoping that that will help deter them from the stuff that I'll plant further in that they do like the smell of. So my parsley, parsley grows really well in shade. So parsley is going to go in there, but I don't want it on the edge because then that's just going to attract the bunnies. So I'll put it further in. And even though this is going to be fenced to begin with, until my trees get big enough that the bunnies aren't going to be able to kill them right away. I don't know if that fence is going to be permanent. Once it's got a good system going and these perennials have really taken good root and they're taking over the whole hugel culture area and they're reproducing, I might take that fence down at some point. I might not. I might just go ahead and leave it. We'll see. But my big hope is just that I can keep the bunnies out of it until that, until they do get big enough to be able to survive if they get attacked. So my hugel culture is going to be um, a mounded area. It starts with some logs and then some smaller twigs and then a little bit of dirt, compost, green stuff like clippings from mowing the grass, stuff like that, um, maybe some leaves. It'll have brown and green stuff in it. Uh, it'll have some goat poop in there with the hay from it because we'll be cleaning out the goat shed soon and goat poop really feeds a, uh, a um, compost bacteria area really well. Um, it breaks down fairly easily to feed the plants, so it's going to give them some fast nutrition. And then as the logs and bigger stuff breaks down, that'll continue to feed the dirt for several years to come. Now at some point I might have to add more fertilizers or whatever, but my hope is that by the time all the hugel culture, the logs and stuff break down, that from the leaves falling from the trees, it's creating its own area. I'm not cleaning this out, guys. This is not something through going, oh my God, leaves. Great, great, great. No, no, I'm not doing that. The Because the leaves are going to create a natural mulch. They're going to break down and that's going to feed into the soil of the hugel culture. So hopefully it'll be a whole self-sustaining system. And that's the idea behind a food forest is that it kind of self-sustains, feeds itself what one needs, one plant needs, another plant gives so that it's not getting all the nutrients sucked out of it either. It's feeding itself through my planning of what lives well in that area and can provide what the other things need. Now clover also puts a lot of nitrogen in the ground. So that to me is just, it's a natural to have that as my ground cover layer versus some of the other ground covers that I kind of considered and clover's edible. Whereas some of the other ones I might've considered might not have been edible. Now, I have considered possibly growing some root-type vegetables or herb-type stuff in there, but then I would have to dig it up. So, I haven't really decided on that, what I'm going to do for things that would grow food below the soil, because below the soil is another, another level of a food forest. So... 
maybe, maybe not. I might put some strawberries for part of my ground cover. I don't know. If I do that, I'm going to have to have a way to block the clover from taking over until the strawberries can really take over. But honestly, I've not really had a lot of good luck with strawberries here. So that probably is not going to be a really great option for me. We'll see. Um, what else? What else? Ooh, I talked about my arch. If I can't get grapes to grow here, I'm debating on what kind of viney type fruit bearing thing that I'll put on that arch. But my brain, yeah, it's not normal. I'm not going to call it fantastic because my brain kind of really sucks a lot of times. My idea, I've got these big pecan trees and the smaller pear trees or other fruit trees. I might get apple trees, although there's plenty of apple trees around here. I might put apple. I haven't decided yet. Plum. I've got a hookup for some plum trees, so they might go in there. In fact, they will because I like plums and they would fit that layer too. Um, anyway, and they don't mind too much shade. They, they're okay in a little bit of shade. They naturally will grow under bigger trees anyway out in the wild. So that's, that's a good one too for me to have in there is some plums. But then amongst all these trees and with this arch something growing up it it's all pretty and makes food so if my grapes don't want to live here give me a comment below and tell me what kind of viney fruit bearing thing you would you think would work well in a food forest and give me some ideas of what will work if my grape idea doesn't work okay y'all have a good day